Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. Today, we're going to work on our old 1935 Chevy sedan and try to get some wiring at least placed in the car. We're going to be using uh, a kit that I bought from Haywire probably back in 2008 or 9, something like that. Hopefully, they're still in business because it's a cool company. They make an excellent product. Okay, I went with Haywire because they're building this stuff like two and a half hours from where I live. So that's always cool to me. I would like to buy everything local, but you know, we all get caught up in the Amazon thing or something else. Uh, and yeah, the price. So Haywire's cool company. I mean, you can see the instruction manual. It's probably 50 pages and it starts you off with the typical stuff. Count your wires, look at everything, make sure you're there figure out what circuit you're going to need and then start laying stuff out. So speaking of what circuit you need, look, I mean, you can see the fuse block, how big it is. Lots of fuses there for all the circuits. This thing comes with like everything. It's got the little uh, lights to go underneath your dash. It's got the door uh, switches, pin switches. So when you open the door, the courtesy lights come on. Even comes with a whole grouping of connectors, some shrink tube, all that stuff. So I know that uh, wiring can be a tricky thing. It can be a pain in the butt. Uh, one of my friends told me that uh, electricity is simple. It's just power and ground with some fancy stuff in between. So hey, enough rambling. Let's go over here, get this stuff laid out, spread out, and figure out what we got. Yeah, that's right, man. I I think for with the amount of wire that is in this kit, we can wire up our neighbor's car from right here. So it should be plenty to route it however we want inside of this 35. so here we are back at it again and you know in the spirit of redoing everything that we've already done I'm gonna redo another piece so I started out and I had just a flat piece of square tubing welded in over here as a support for the steering wheel that's always good right you want your steering wheel to stay still while you're trying to turn on it well, when I go to put the fuse box in for our electrical, like I kind of decided back here would be a good spot because it's where they typically are, right? So I put it in and then this bar is like extreme right in the way. You can't even see most of the fuses on it. So I've modified everything to move it over here, but I couldn't leave it just a piece of square tubing. I had to come in and cut this notch out because the instrument panel has this cool little body line feature and it hit on the square tubing. So yeah, here we are. We're getting ready to weld inside of our freshly painted car, which is awesome. Everybody loves to do that. So I got to cover it up to protect it, get the welder fired up, weld this in, and then maybe I can get my fuse block mounted up so I can start routing wiring. All right, so at this point, I've got this piece tacked in. You can see where our fuse box is gonna mount back here. And we have clearance, because we stuck that dash back in to make sure that we're fitting good. I did pull the gauges out because I'm afraid of messing them up. So next step, I've got to tack weld that plate in there and get our fuse box mounted in so then we can finally start running some wiring. All right guys, so a little quick tip to help you out. I need to run the courtesy lights or the dome light wires up through this A pillar and around. Well, there's all kinds of obstructions, so 
what I do is just like you would if you were working in a house, take and use a bigger piece to fish your way down through there and then just tape your other wires to it once you get it out. So we've got her down here. I'm gonna fold that over so I don't pull it off in here. Tape my pieces up and then run them back up through that. Now, I am gonna take, and I'm just gonna, I think, I'm just gonna fold those over like that because this white wire is pretty long by itself. Maybe we do that, hook that on there, tape it up right quick, see how it works for us. What do you say? Ah, come on. So, hope you guys are having a good day today. This is a, it's been a good day, but it's been a challenge out here trying to get everything where it needs to go, having to move a bunch of stuff that I welded in a long time ago. I don't know. I guess if you did enough of these, you would just kind of expect the crap. All right, so see that came right up in there. Then I have another piece of square tube here I could run this through, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because we have right up above you here. Uh, yep, right here. We have a spot for a dome light and then we'll probably put us another one back here and maybe one in the very back since we've got a pretty good sized car. So we're going to get these up in here and just kind of coil them up for right now. I'm just trying to get everything in its destination and the old kit, man, she come with lots of extra wire. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. You know? see a lot of stuff come from China and you know it's cheap enough but the wires gauge is really small and this wiring harness guys it's got what those wires are every six inches on the wire so it's a pretty nice kit that's what I'm trying to say So I whipped up this thing so I can put pressure on this plate to be able to get the little, there's a tiny little snap ring inside here on all these uh, GM tilt columns. So now I got to go back and get a little hook tool and warm it around. They make a, a tool that screws on here that sits way up out of your way and puts pressure down there. That would be really nice to have right now, but I don't. So this is where I'm at. And I think I have it depressed enough. I'm going to fight it out of there. Ah, come on. Come on. Yeah. Damn, I know you want to come out of there. Oh, no. I let it fall back down in the groove. Oh, dang it. Hopefully it didn't fly off and kill anybody. What a pain, GM. The engineers are winning today. So that's what you're after is that. It holds this down. So starting to get a pile of parts. I'm going to have to get an organizer out here. Horn ring button. Big spring. All right, now we're down in here with all the, all the goodies. I see why my crap wasn't working real smooth. It's just dirty. 
nothing really wrong with it. The pain is everything we need to get to is in the bottom of all of the all the goody. So it was Phillips screwdriver, impact driver, whatever you got, and just spend a little time giving it. All right, hopefully this, hopefully this shows up, but now the key goes all the way forward. That pin pops out like it's supposed to. So now the pin will engage in those little teeth and lock the steering wheel. Woohoo! You know what was wrong? The column is something that somebody uh, converted to make it from woo granny shift to floor shift, I guess is what you'd say. Um, so it still has this collar that moves like the old shifter. Well, what had happened, for whatever reason, it was caught down in the bottom um, and it wouldn't let it go quite far enough for this pin to come all the way out, for it to roll all the way back into the lock position. So now that I've taken the, everything apart, I'll get to put it all back together, right? So got this part of it done. Now I've got to put all the switches back on the column because I took all of them off uh, just to make sure everything was free moving. And then... We'll get back to the wiring running on the car. This little adventure here, I did have this column completely taken apart and I feel like an idiot, so. All right guys, so that's like 30 uh, seconds for you and uh, four or five days for me. This column is all back together. It's tight now. I will say when you tear everything down, have the camera running and show exactly how everything goes together. It would have saved me a lot of time to do that, but Columns in, all the switches are adjusted, everything works. The key over here will act like an ignition switch now. So let's move on. And with moving on, we'll take a look in here. I've coiled up some of the wires that I know I'm not going to need right now. Have a few of them here. I have all this set up where it will push over and go into the kick panel area. I'll be able to zip tie it to this piece of square tubing in here and get everything coming out right behind the old fuse block there to clean it up. I have wires strung out this direction here and some looped over the column. It's just the way it's going to be until I have the dash in it and I'm ready to put the gauges in there. Speaking of which, let's go look at where that project is. All right, had uh, some auto meter gauges that were in an instrument cluster for a, a C10, I think, but I wasn't going to use them in that. So here we go, 35 Chevy. I just went online, copied an image, paste it, get them where you like them. I wanted to get these four gauges in the center, speedo, tack, everything in there. So be a later project. I just wanted to show you where we were at right now with it. Okay guys, so the back we've got, uh, yeah, more wires. Have all of the tail lights and main power and then ignition right here. So uh, I believe the battery is gonna live up here. Um, not exactly sure. If I put it back here, it seems like it's in the way. If I put it up there, it's still kind of in the way, but I think having stuff open back by this door is going to be the best bet. So anyway, I'm going to go try to round up some big cables to run the battery hot wire and the main ground. All right, got our foam in here. She's using the good old foam that 3M makes for noise, vibration, and harmonics. It's kind of cool in the shop, so it should foam up good still. Just give us maybe a little bit more time to play with it here. These are some big gaps we got going. I'm trying to kind of lead it a little bit. Let that stuff uh, 
run as it's foaming. Maybe it'll fill the gaps in easier. Seems like it's working. Hard to predict. It's kind of like the construction foam, but it's not. It's not even in the same family. It stays nice and flexible. And once it expands out to fill a gap, it just comes back and expands on itself so you don't have to worry about it splitting seams in your metal or anything. Boy, there's some, there's a few gaps in the old 35 Chevy. So we're gonna try to pack this stuff back in this little hole back here seal this dude up some so we don't have to worry about dust and all the other crap coming in our car. There we go. All right, there you go. That's this side. I'm going to do the other one, but I'm not recording it. All right, guys, and we're obviously outside of the car right now. And you can see I've got everything that ends up back by the distributor kind of coiled up, loosely ran there, choke cable here, and then wires for the alternator here. So we've still got to have a main charging wire coming off the back of the alternator. We got to have our starter. So that's this bunch of wires coming out of the inside. Got my battery cable, nice big fat stuff there. My charging wire from my alternator. And I pulled this in just so I'd have something to pull another wire through with because we got to have some more stuff down here at the starter, right? So let's, uh, let's do some crimping. So we've got number two wire, just a three eighths ring made for number two. And if you're really careful, you can get it to all push in there. I just took and marked kind of how far back it would go. Did it on this. Got out this uh, hydraulic crimper and probably used it completely wrong. But the end is on there super tight. I just wanted to show the crimp. And then I put, I did remember even to put some heat shrink back behind that so we can heat shrink that dude up nice all right so in amongst all the other projects i took the dash panel and uh yeah look at that she sure did turn out sweet but anyway got the dash panel repainted uh to match the car the stripes actually line up where it comes into the jams i'll show that later on got the cutout for the steering column and my mock-up of the instrument cluster in here still like don't want to put any pressure on anybody waiting on uh, my aluminum piece and they are going to take an engine turn it for me and then it goes into the anodizing shop so yeah you got to work quite a ways ahead on some of these projects to get everything uh ready for you when you're ready for it if that makes sense to you all I've ordered a starter solenoid and some other pieces so I can connect the wires from the battery on the battery end. And we just keep making connections on the car out here as we go. So that's kind of where I'm at. All right, we've got our oil pressure sending unit put in. I stuck this HEI in. It's not gonna work sitting where it is. It's just too close. We're gonna have to buy another distributor, unfortunately. I have light wiring all just kind of stubbed out running wild because that's where we're at. Um, this is everything for the alternator and electric fans, all that kind of wiring. Um, I got the wire bolted to the starter over here. So this is our battery cable coming from the solenoid here. We'll have to jump across a couple leads on the starter, main charge wire here. I mean, it's all here. It's just loosely laid in place. Inside, 
We got our steering column working in this video. We got a ton of wiring just laid everywhere in here. It is going to get sorted out, guys, I promise. It's just, it takes a lot of time to get this stuff done. I think this is a long enough video. If you like what we're putting out, give it a thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. That's free for you. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video.